I don't know, because when your ex dies, it's like, yay, I can live again. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Hell yeah, I like I this guy. I'm an easy man. He's <laughs> easy. Got a better cat than star. All right. About to happen. Ready? Yeah. Hello, this is Coco and Darla back again with Love at First Song. We have Josh and Morningstar here, and in the back, you can't really see him back here, but Bearcat, Bearcat. you can pop your head in if you want. We our first side artist. Yes. So I'm a little excited about that. Real Go quick ahead, to pop it in, a couple months ago, when did you play Tower Theater? It was December, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. We met him at uh, at Tower Theater over there at the merch table and kind of told him all about what we were doing. Actually, and, oh yeah, I she has tell a better part. The version of the story. Josh just asked for hospitality from the Oklahomans, and when I went to the merch table to buy a T-shirt, no one had offered hospitality, and so we were like, "You want hospitality together?" And we fist bumped, <laughs> and then we bought shirts, and then I told him the story. He's like, "You're." That's really what happened. That, right? I wasn't there for now, that. Let me tell you what really happened. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I was standing at the merch booth and they came up and handed me a and, uh, I did. Sold him some t shirts. I think that was it. And he gave That's us 11 free stickers because he was like, solid men. I'm They're like, awesome. thanks. They are, oh, I was going to bring one. I think it's in my van. Oh, my van's at home. It's okay. You're on, our, it's on, you're on our fridge. You've been there. Since they got right. stickers, so, so. so somehow, yeah. So you're the first artist that's on our <laughs> fridge that's actually in here. Lord knows I need all the help I can get. Thank you. Well, don't worry. We're gonna spread this like wildfire everywhere, even if people don't want to watch it. They're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> somehow we roped them into doing an episode with us. Um, but the thing is, we like to be funny, and we don't really know Josh's humor that well. So we've set up a little icebreaker called "What Do You Mean?" Uh, Okay, right. so Bear what we do... Bear and just exchange eye glances. They They're did. Scared. When all the drugs and alcohol randomly hit you at once and you got to stay focused on not dying. <laughs> <laughs> not dying. It's soothing for the ground. Yeah. When the music festival's over, the drugs have worn off and reality is <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is... <laughs> oh, man. When you walk in on your grandma riding your grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, read that one again. <laughs> Please, I think it's my Throw favorite. Throw it in, Darla. When you walk in on your grandma riding your grandpa in reverse cowgirl. Oh, yeah. That winner. one has to win. That one's the winner. That's the winner. Whose is that? Bear yes! Cat. You need to be in the He shot, has, man. all right, he has one point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this is great. Let's go. Just go. <laughs> this is our game, and here we are. <laughs> Just. <laughs> <laughs> you got this? I don't think so. All right, when the douchebag jock from high school serves you your McFlurry. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. When you pop a boner while watching a Disney oh, movie. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, these are wild. You, these are wild cards. When I don't you nod quickly and now you hear her in the bathroom giggling on the phone. <laughs> that one wins, too. Oops. Uh, no, my favorite is the douchebag jock. Well. I like it. Yes. Who's douchebag jock? See? This when your soulmate <laughs> comes into your life before you're done being a hoe. <laughs> yes! That one wins. That one wins. Okay. Woohoo! Yay! I'm going to say, I'm going to say that's Oh, is that you, Darla? Yeah. Damn it. Dear Darla, <laughs> you win. <laughs> Yay. Finally. Host. I sorry. Yeah. I just that was caught. Good. I, I have three kids, so I got that was great. For days. Oh, we <laughs> love dad jokes. Darla's all yeah. about them. I try to make something up with everybody's name when they come on, and it's always <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Isaac Stalin came on, and I told him no stalling was allowed. No, hers were bad. I was like, please quit talking. Dwight Hamlin, you know, turn the the Dwights on. And it that's his stupid. first name all instead of stupid. his last night. Last Aaron name. Dwight. Good morning, Star. Oh, see, I like that. Uh, one. So I want to talk about. Find it. I want to talk about Joshua and where your love of music started. Okay. Yeah. I've always uh, 
I mean, I sang in the choir when I was four and five. It's just always something I've been drawn to. Uh, I got my first guitar when I was nine and wrote my first song. It was called School. I don't like it. And, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's just it's just always something I've done. Uh, made hip hop when I was a younger guy, and because uh, I've always dug poetry and, and the guys that are my favorite writers or lyricists. It's just what I'm into. Uh, Here are some of your favorite writers. Chris Christopherson, Billy Don Burns, Hank Williams. Okay. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of them. John Prine, Jim Croce. Uh, man, I could, I could go on. Write a book about just your favorites. That's where we're at. I could. I spent man. many years studying history of country music. Really? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I feel like not many a lot years. of people do that. Yeah, many, many years of my life. Just for your own interests? Mm -hmm. That's really neat. It's so you know, know quite a bit about the scene and, and the people in it and how it's developed. That's good to know. He knows it all. I know it all. So did him. Well, Edgy McKay does Josh. Well, what do you want to know about? I'll talk to you about anything all you want to talk to about. We want to know all of it. Well, country, no. country music was first thing. The first country record that people consider a country record was from Vernon Dahlhart in 1923. Uh, it sold a million copies. Uh, in 1923? 1923. That's a big number for 1923. Uh, it's a huge number, and I can't remember the name of the song right now, but uh, Vernon Dahlhart. And then in 1929, you had what's called the Peer Sessions, which was uh, the Carter family and Jimmy Rogers in Bristol, Virginia, I think. It's right there on the line. I can never remember if it's Virginia side or Tennessee side, but yeah. And here we are now. All branched from that. It's like Adam and Eve, country music. That's right. That's, that's awesome. I love You're stuff the first like person that. that's brought us a fun fact like that, so well, much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> so after you wrote that first song when you were nine, um, where did it kind of progress from there? Did you? I guess you picked up guitar around then, or were you just writing? Yeah, I got. I wrote my first song after I got my first guitar, and. Uh, I grew up, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents when I grew up, or when I was growing up. <clears throat> and they listened to, you know, the country of the day, which at the time was like Alabama and, and bands like that. But they also listened to old stuff, Hank Williams and, and Ernest Hub. But while I was growing up, I don't know, I'm 35, so I'm, you know, I was born in 83, but I grew up in the 90s. And mm -hmm. the 1990s is when hip hop. Kind of, you know what I mean? And yeah, it, I was out. really drawn into it. So, so where were you at that time as a kid living? Um, Maryland, about an hour west okay. of Baltimore. Yeah. Now, how did you decide to to do music long term and and kind of make a career of this? <clears throat> well, it's always something I've. I mean, I've always, as, as soon as I was eighteen, uh, the, the hip hop group I was in, mm -hmm. we started touring. So I've always packed up and gone. Um, I mean, I've worked odd job, odd jobs throughout the year. So when Cody decided Must Be the Whiskey was going to be the single off his Lifer's record, uh, I decided to start going to Nashville and doing the co-write thing because I'd never done it. I write my own damn songs, you know right. what I mean? And I still do. I really don't co-write too, too much. I'm just love, I'm just blessed to be writing with very talented people, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Absolutely. Like, yeah. But anyway, uh, so the first couple of months I was doing that, I was sleeping in the car because I got a bunch of kids bounce mouth to feed, you know? Right. So, Heard that uh, and a dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Duke. Hey, <laughs> like, hey Polly, I yeah. love you, but... Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so I, was, I would sleep in the car. I'd still be on the road. Uh, you know, whenever I wasn't on the road, I would go to Nashville and, uh, and just sleep in the car because mm -hmm. you got to do what you got to do. Mm -hmm. And I did it for a couple of months and then... Uh, I'd talk to him, and I, I wouldn't tell anybody I was doing that, man, because it's just, you know. Yeah. But, but, it's uh, just the road. Yeah, man, it's just the road. I do it all the fucking time, still to this day. Yeah. But, uh, so I said, man, I'm, I've been sleeping in the car. He said, what? What? <laughs> I, man, I got this big old house up here. You come on up. I said, man, I tell you what, I can't give you a lot of money for rent, but I give you, he said, no, you won't. I said, yeah, I will. He said, no, you won't. <laughs> Yeah, I will. Same. No, you won't. And if I find money leaving around, we're going to fight. I said, I don't want to fight you, brother. Right I love you. So you just keep writing them songs and we'll be all right. You're our kind of people. That's, like, I can't tell you how tell many you what, people will come and just crash on my couch. And since yeah. I was, like, living in Nashville and my kids were little, I'm like, this is an open house. Anybody yeah. who needs food 
or a place mm-hmm. to sleep or I'll wash their clothes. If yeah. they're trying to make this, yeah. then this is here. So Well, a lot of musicians, um, I think that's kind of what separates musicians that, that really make it and musicians that don't. Because a lot of people are great. They're talented, but they're not willing to sleep in a car or uh, to do what it takes. Like, yeah, you have mouths to feed, but they're like, Mm-mm, nope, not not sleeping in a car. I'm or not doing this for free. One hundred dollar door deals or something. Yeah, right. you know. So it says a lot about your character and your passion for music, um, and the respect you have for the industry to be able to do that, and for someone to come in and say, you know what, dude, I respect you enough and your skill enough to, to bring you into my home is a big thing. And it's probably a lot of the reason why you're you're sitting where you're at. I mean, not in boots, but I mean, as a musician. <laughs> yeah. Here too, here too. <laughs> oh, man, how are you? I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And Hell yeah. really, we really appreciate it because a, a lot of people, well, not a lot of people, maybe, I don't know, but just to not really know somebody and talk for a few minutes, like, you know what, that's kind of cool what you're doing. I'll give it a shot. Like, that's, that's humbling to mm-hmm. know that there's still good people out there. Because mm-hmm. we run into a lot. Oh, man. We do. <laughs> We're all <laughs> assholes. Yeah. Must be in women that love music and don't play instruments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> man. I know. I know. Hey, you so you're a... Uh... <laughs> I'm just wondering if you have a, you know, two, three, four-year outlook of where you would like to be. And ultimately, huge dreams, like... We always say, what's your biggest dream? What do you want to do in the end? Who do you want to play with? Who do you want to record with? Is there any, you know, certain writer that you really would just hope to write with one day? Well, uh, I mean, there's a bunch as far as playing shows go with or writing or just anything in that vein. I mean, Christopherson, I've gotten to meet him and spend some time with him, but I haven't gotten to play with him. And that'd be... That'd be a legit duo. Yet. That'd, be, that'd be cool. Yeah, I'd, I'd dig that a whole lot. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. And just the hang, yeah, but, you know? Oh, yeah. Other than that, man, uh, I, I try not to put too much thought into that. I have people that put that thought in for me, which I'm very grateful to have. <laughs> so I don't have to. Amen. Do I can just focus on what it is that I do. Yeah, that's good. Whatever the hell that is. Uh, hopefully there's always a show tomorrow and somewhere to... Hey, there's night. always people right. that want to hear music. Talking about how songs are made, it was funny. I was just thinking, um, are you kind of a moment type guy um, that when it happens, you just write it? Because that's funny. I used to do that in my book when I would write. Or some people just write off a situation that's happened, you know. Mm-hmm. Are you more of an emotional writer or oh, more yeah. of like a like no, I can't. factual? I mean, we make appointments and that that's one of the hard things hardest things about co-writing that I found is okay you have to be creative Monday morning at 10 o'clock or, yeah. or you know uh, Wednesday yeah. afternoon. That would stress me out. Man uh, that's that's been my least favorite part of co-writing because I am just a when it hits me it does rock and roll kind of kind of you know something. Yeah I get that I hear that a lot too even when I was living out there it's like okay you have appointments here 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 and I'm like what how can you get in that? I'm sad. Okay, do I need whiskey? What do I need to do yeah, here? Yeah. Yeah. No, I totally get because I feel that way with it. Like, we're, I think, we're funny together, you know, mm-hmm. off the cuff, like when we're drunk at bars and stuff. But then when we decide, <laughs> yeah, when we decide to do oh, this, this we're like, uh, can we do this in a scheduled manner sober? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And so I totally get that because it's really hard when you have almost like a magnifying glass on you, like, okay, perform. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which I guess you have to do that on stage every night, but That's at least you know different. what you're going to say yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you do. Instead of trying to pull words out of the air. Yeah. Um, I think the, the biggest thing, the main focus of this show that we're putting on is just, and you, made, you kind of already covered it, but um, is just to kind of figure out where an artist's heart is and why they're doing what they're doing. What's going to keep like propelling them forward? Um, I do this because I have to. to. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I have to. I've, there's been a period of my life where I stopped, and mm-hmm. when I stopped, I almost killed myself. Like, I was a junkie. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I get that, though. It, it's what you were sent here to I, do, I and if you don't do yeah, that, exactly. then... That's, William Blake is, is a poet, one of my favorite poets, and he said, if you're doing anything, if you're supposed to be making art, this paraphrase, if you're supposed to be making art and you're not, you're doing it not only a disservice to yourself, but to God. Absolutely. Yes. I have had that conversation with someone that was thinking about quitting music, and I said, do you know how many people that feel 
the divorce that you're going through, but would never be able to put it into words and they mm -hmm. can cry their heart out or whatever and, and get past it. it. You know, your what is, you know, your therapy is someone else's salvation sometimes through lyrics, I feel like. That's uh that's at least what we try to do. Yeah. You do I think you do a good job at it. Thank you. Damn what good uh job. what song you gonna or songs if you're doing more than one which one are you gonna play for well, us? One today? of them's new. This is like a premiere. This is like the third one in a row. We're so excited. Thank you, Lord. You just let them down on us. <laughs> We're outrageous. That's awesome. Yeah, I wrote it with a buddy of mine named Alex Williams. Uh, okay. It's called Brand New Day. And then the other one is the uh, mm -hmm. first single off Nose Record, Jerry Lee. Which I love that song. Darla and I were jamming to it earlier. And I love the story about how you were talking about it. And I think I actually wrote my favorite line down. Chuck Berry and the Real Trail Blazer. I was like, oh, yeah, Josh Morningstar. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. I know. I've been calling you Josh. Hey, Is that okay? That's you. I know you're Josh. Josh. Wah, but Josh. It Jay. It flowed. Josh. 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 We got it. Well, um, we just. Uh, Hollywood. Playboy. Yeah. Who's, Playboy. Are these all your names? Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> I've, been call, I've been calling him Bruce. Bruce and Bearcat. Yeah. Ooh. That's how we're airing this. Uh -oh. It's not Josh. Yeah, Bruce, right? sorry. Brucey Bruce. Bruce, Bruce. Bruce Morningstar. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> so probably We've That's learned so with nicknames. <laughs> supposedly with nicknames, you're not allowed so to attack the last name. Hey. You're not sure. Hey, man. You should change your stage name to that. Bruce Morningstar. Hey. Hey. No. No. You could just like use that, that to choke, check into hotels. <laughs> Bruce Morningstar. That way if you f*** anything up, they can't have your actual name attached yeah. to it. It's a good plan, man. It's a good plan. Oh, we, <laughs> we just wanted to say thank you guys so much uh, for coming yeah. out. It's been a special treat. You know, we hey, we got two. Just for letting me in. And that's Absolutely. awesome. Yeah. Normally that they, special they close treat. the doors and lock them when I come up. You know? Oh, no. <laughs> no. We, uh, if we're locking people out, that's not good. You're not loving everybody that's out. in your path every day. You're not doing it right, you know. Hey. I believe that. Well, uh, we'll get some music going. We're going to take a break and get everything set up and let Josh do his thing. Real quick, before we close out, I didn't ask you, do you have any, um, like, April, May time, if you can think of it off the top of your head? If not, any kind of big events or anything you'd like to let people know about? Uh, man, I'm, I'm just always on the road. Always? There's always. Okay. There's always something. Uh, I know Hagfest will be cool. That's in uh, Newport, Kentucky, beginning of April. It's a rough. Uh, Hell no, yeah, be that'll tribute. be awesome. Uh, That's pretty good. Out of it. Yeah, a bunch of people on there. I have to look it up. We'll uh, we'll put your your website link and stuff at the bottom, cool. and and put the, the link for the fest there, so people can check it yeah. out. Yeah. Um, that way we can hopefully get some folks out to your show or, you know, I'm sure there's going to be We're people trying. there, I'm sure. Well, <laughs> but, no, there will be, but we love being able to find new music and no. we always say that. <laughs> yeah, a lot exactly. of times people can't exactly. come to the Tower Theater on a Tuesday or Wednesday and so yeah. we want to use this to try to tell those people about it and get you guys yeah. out there even more. Yeah. So. Uh, Bring some music it. out Thank for you. folks that are sitting at home. All right, well. We'll be back. That's it for this portion. See you guys in a but anyway. Champagne. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this is called Jerry Lee. Oh, I'm Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee. Little Billy and Sandy Day, tickling teens and ivories. Praise the Lord, help us die. I'm Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee Pianos, pistols, tragedies Pentecost, fury, and a shot of speed Sang great balls of fire mm -hmm. Well, if you don't know, then I'll learn you something They don't call me the killer for nothing Dangerous, the methamphetamine buzzing Crazy enough to marry my first cousin Touched by the devil, paranoid hellraiser Fuck Chuck Berry, I'm the real trailblazer People always staring like a scared of me For the record they ought to be I'm Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee Bill Pilly and Sandy D Tickling teens and ivories Praise the Lord, help us die I'm Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee Pianos, pistols, hit screams Pentecost, fury, and a shot of speed Sang great balls of fire 
there's blood on the carpet, blood on the lamp, blood on the bed sheets, blood on my hands. This sort of thing might have happened before. Black back girl ain't bad no more. I know I'm needy, sometimes jealous. I'm larger than life, baby. I can't help it. She knew what would happen if she tried to leave. Nobody walks out on me. I'm Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee. Your Billy and Sandy tickling things. Breeze, praise the Lord else die. I'm Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee. Pianos, pistols, hits, greens. Pentecostal fury in a shot of speed. Sang great balls of fire. Oh, seven my seven deadly sins. Four and five died. Coincidence, this old Oak County, no evidence. Cause and effect, I'm messing with Jerry Lee, Jerry Lee. Inconclusive autopsy Who, what, where, why It's a mystery But it's all, all right I'm Jerry Lee Jerry Lee Yeah, the boy around here Take care of me Wouldn't dare try Depending on me And my great balls of fire Sang great balls of fire Still singing great balls of fire Oh, All we know now is that <laughs> Bear's funny. <laughs> Bearcat's funny. Huh. And so is Josh. And everybody's got a little hoe in them. We, huh. that's and all. Everybody's that. got a little hoe in them. This is but true. But sometimes it, it's not good to be a hoe. No. That's not what we were saying. No. Right. Every now and then a certain person comes around and tames it, you know, and you can just be a hoe with that one person. But. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Insights with Darla.